Hey friends, Asher with Genesense. Hope you're doing really well. I'm losing sunlight, so I'm gonna have to shoot this really fast. I'm out in the Smoky Mountains, which you can partially kind of see behind me. Maybe I'll show you some other views as this video goes on, but today I'm gonna be doing some first impressions. These two right here. Tommy Hilfiger Impact Intense and the new Polo Ralph Lauren Cologne Intense. So we got lots of intensity here. I'm gonna let you guys know if any one of these is any good. So let's just jump into it. Like I said, guys, losing sunlight. So I'm just gonna jump right into this Tommy Hilfiger Impact Intense. Let's open it up. Here's a good look at the box for Tommy Hilfiger Impact Intense. Ordered this off the Tommy Hilfiger website. So if you go there, you can scoop this one up. And I actually got this really sick discount with it and came out to like $45, something like that. They said they had a 20% off kind of discount code going on, but for some reason it was even less for me or an even greater discount than 20%. So whatever, I'm not arguing. And there's the bottle, Impact Intense. Same bottle design as the original Impact. And this one is 1.7 and it's got no travel atomizer in the cap. Lame. I guess if you get the 100 mil, then they give you the little built-in travel atomizer. And if you get the 50 mil, they give you nothing other than what you paid for, Tommy Hilfiger. Come on. All right, let's go ahead and spray it on. See how it is. You get this spicy warmth right away. It's actually pretty nice. All things considered, this is not an expensive fragrance. Let me cap, it doesn't want to stay on there correctly. It's not an expensive fragrance. And once this hits discounters, it should be even cheaper. And I like it. I like the way this smells. Apple, spiciness, warmth resins, the chestnut you can pick up, and that's kind of a popular note here lately. I've noticed that in a number of fragrance reviews that I've done here, chestnut or hazelnut, something like that. Those warm, nutty notes, those warm, nutty notes, they're getting used more. And that spiciness, a lot of that's gonna be the cardamom here. It smells good. This is actually really appealing and surprisingly solid for a Tommy Hilfiger. A lot of times Tommy Hilfiger fragrances smell cheap. And you know what I'm talking about. If you've smelled a lot of Hilfiger, you, you know what I mean. They can come across super forgettable, really cheap, uh, synthetic to death, especially off the top. This is actually good. This ambery facet is coming out really in a strong way, mixing with that chestnut and those warm spices. And I gotta tell you guys, this is probably, it will definitely, the best Hilfiger fragrance that I can remember smelling maybe the past five years, maybe longer. It's got this good amount of freshness off the top, but it pretty much right away goes into this warm, spicy, kind of compliment pulling facet or vibe. That's what it's giving off. There's a lot of woodiness in the base here as well. So I would imagine as it dries down that that's gonna come out more, but right now, not getting that woodiness. Getting amber, getting this, this sort of resinous, warm spiciness, like I've said a number of times. I'd say you could pull this off in spring, pull this off in fall, probably pull this off in winter as well. So this one, not really something I would think of as a summer fragrance, just because around here, you're looking at 90, 95 degrees Fahrenheit on a typical summer day. And this one doesn't have as much freshness as I would expect for a summertime scent. Now this could change greatly as it dries down. And this is just my initial first impression pretty much on the top of the scent. You know, this isn't a, a full wearing where I'm going into great detail, but I can tell you right now, my initial impression that is solid because it's a Tommy Hilfiger and Tommy Hilfiger, when I see it, I'm like, that's gonna suck. And when it doesn't, I'm like, what? Let's open this one up. Here's a look at the box of the new Polo. Pretty simple, not a ton going on here. Got the information on the back. And there's the bottom for you. Now the badge code on the Tommy Hilfiger, I wanted to give that to you, 20332. And on this one, 38U100E. There it is, the new Polo. It's done up in that classic Ralph Lauren style. This one I bought off of Ulta, ulta.com. Go ahead and give it a spray. Oh, atomizer is different, more modern style. Uh, if you're familiar with the old Ralph Lauren, that one comes with a, you know that gangster looking 80s style atomizer, a lot bigger. 
There we go. Pretty solid. Okay, so this is basically taking polo, polo green, the polo that people have worn for decades, taking that and making it more modern, making it fresher. That's what this is. Yeah, actually, exactly what this is. It's taking that DNA and just making it easier to wear for today's day and age, which some people are not gonna like because that strips out some of what makes polo polo. Again, we're talking the original polo green, but a lot of people are gonna really like this because it does make it a little more wearable. Tones down that masculine edge, takes that pininess of the original and yeah, tones that down too. So you still have that green herbal facet here in the opening of the fragrance. It's just not as aggressive, not as in your face. It's got more liveliness to it, more of a spark, more of a pop, and again, more freshness. Not a ton of grapefruit in the opening for me. Just a, a little spritz maybe, you know, like instead of having the whole grapefruit or the grapefruit cut in half or something like that, no, it's like you have the grapefruit and you just kind of spritz out a little bit of grapefruit essence. That's kind of what this is like, just a little bit. Now on the base here, there's patchouli, there's ambroxan, there's vetiver. And so by looking at that, you can tell it's gonna be going a more contemporary sort of way with that dry down. So again, you're not gonna get as much of a, a punch here, that masculine edge, that hairy chest vibe the original polo had. You're not gonna find as much of that here. Now I do like it, I think it's solid, but basically what they're doing is they're just, they're just updating a very popular DNA. And you know what, that gets me thinking, big brain time. Why don't they do a modernized Dracar Noir? We're just throwing it out there. Guy La Roche. Get on that. Give me that modern Dracar Noir. Dracar Noir Cologne Intense. I'll buy it. So yeah, this one, very green, very fresh, spring, summertime. And, and that may be a little interesting because you would think, oh, the original polo green, too heavy for summer. Nah, this one, I think you can pull off in summer. A little bit of clary sage coming out now. Again, everything here, very fresh, green, and herbal. Not as woody though, more herbal. But when I say herbal, I do mean in a clean, more modern way. Yeah, yeah, the more I smell this, the more kind of streamlined and stripped away it feels compared to the original Polo Green. A lot of those notes from the original Polo Green that were, like I've said a number of times, more masculine, more in your face, those are gone by the wayside. But it still has that, that DNA, that feel. When you smell it, you can tell Polo Green right away. So I do like it. And you may think, no, no, it can't be good. You know, the original, that's the only way to go. But for me, I think it's actually good. It's a nice interpretation of the original. It's brought forward, made more modern, cleaner, fresher, uh, brighter even. And that's going to appeal to more guys now. And so a lot of people out there that might ride off polo green as just being too old, you know, my dad would wear it, my grandfather would wear it, something like that. They can actually pick this up and, and pull this off and not feel like they're wearing a, an older guy's fragrance. And so I like that. I like that it takes this classic DNA, it, it maintains the, the integrity for the most part of that DNA, but makes it more appealing. I like it. And Impact Intense, <laughs> it's actually really good. I really do like this a lot. and. It still smells good. It's not falling apart. This is a solid Tommy Hilfiger fragrance. And when this hits discounters, when Hilfiger Impact Intense hits discounters and you can pick this up 40 bucks or under, I say go for it. If it sounds interesting to you, I should say. Not everybody go for it, just if it sounds interesting to you. So there we go. First impressions on both of these and both of them pretty good. I don't think I have a clear favorite between the two. They're both really different. I think they're both very successful in what they're doing and how they pull them off. So there we go, Impact Intense and the new Polo Cologne Intense. Two intense fragrances, both actually good, at least first impression wise. When they dry down, they could be complete trash, but I don't think they will be. There we go, guys. If you've smelled either of those, let me know what you think about them. As always, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. We beat the sunset.